Have you ever had an idea for a perfume? You thought this is going to turn out great. Let's just take some of this, some of that. I don't know, maybe some some lemon, some mint, some some chocolate, some coffee, some uh, cologne, some lavender, and you know I want the perfume to smell like that. So let's just put all of those things together, and we're going to make a perfume, and it's going to be an absolute masterpiece. It's going to smell amazing. So you go tip all the things in, you put them all together, and then you go and smell it, and you think this smells like absolute. Well, if that sounds like you, firstly, don't worry because it happens to a lot of people and also used to happen to me quite a lot too. And then secondly, watch to the end of this video because in this video I'm going to share with you a method which you can use to create almost infinite combinations of pretty good, pretty nice smelling perfumes on your first or second try. And it's going to allow you to go and use the raw materials and get the rough kind of smells you want in your perfume while at the same time having the perfume remaining smelling quite nice overall. That method is the use of what I like to call perfume bases. So if you're interested in finding out all about how you can use these for yourself, then definitely watch to the end of the video and you'll find out exactly how you can use this technique in your perfumery. Okay then, so what is a perfume base? Well, a lot of people like to call these workhorse bases. I like to call them perfume bases because, well, that's pretty much what they are. They are bases which are designed to represent a perfume. So, if you don't already know, a base in perfumery is essentially a short formula for part of your perfume, or a short formula which, when taken together, can represent something like an accord or a raw material. So if you went to make an orange base, for example, you would have your raw materials that mix together to go and smell like orange, and then you have the certain amounts required to go and make that in that exact ratio that you penned that base at, and then you can go and make that base as much as you want to get that exact same smell. That's what a base is. What makes perfume bases different from just regular bases is, well, they're designed to encapsulate the structure of a perfume. So what you can kind of think of these as is like a generic perfume, which you then go and build on top of. It's almost like a uh, black and white drawing from one of those coloring books, and then later you go and fill in the colors. The kind of actual composition, the structure, the drawing is already there, but you can go and then personalize it afterwards to make it exactly how you want. So characteristics of these perfume bases, which you should be looking for. Firstly, you wanna make it quite neutral, and that, similar to our analogy with the coloring book, is that you start off with a black and white drawing, you don't start with something that's already been colored in, and that's because you wanna let the person doing the coloring in choose which colors they want to use. So in our perfume bases, we don't wanna make them smell too strongly like one specific thing, rather we just wanna have a general pleasant smell which can then kind of be used in lots of different perfumes and depending what we add to it later, it will completely transform the perfume into the character of those little things we add on at the end. The other thing about these perfume bases is we want them to perform well. So what we mean by performing well in perfumery is things like we want them to last a long time because often people want their perfumes to last a long time and we want them to be diffusive, for example, because often a lot of people want you to actually notice their perfume from a distance rather than only if you go and smell it really close to the skin. Another thing about these bases is the simpler, the better. An excellent exemplification, in my opinion, of this is the Groschman Accord created by Sophia Groschman. Now, this is one of the most famous accords in perfumery, and it is used by countless perfumers all over the world to make a multitude of perfumes. Essentially, their perfume is often composed a large part of this core Groschman Accord, and then other things are added on top of it, which is pretty much exactly what I'm saying we should do in this video. So, the Groschman Accord is very simple. It's only made up of four raw materials, and you can go check out my video on the Groschman Accord if you haven't already, and in that video, I walk you through making one for yourself. But in essence, the Groschman Accord simply consists of Hedione, Isoe Super, Alpha Isomethyl Ionone, and Galaxolide. That's only four raw materials, yet the Groschman Accord is used in countless perfumes all over the world. In a minute, we're gonna go and actually look at some examples of these perfume bases, which I've got right here. But firstly, I wanna give you a general anatomy of these perfume bases so you know how to construct them for yourself. Now, it should come as no surprise that we're gonna achieve these characteristics by choosing raw materials in the first place which already possess these characteristics. So I'm gonna go through a list of the categories or the types of raw material which are perfect for these perfume bases. So firstly, there's Isoe Super and its different variants. I did a video on Isoe Super last week, so if you're interested about the variants, then go check out that video and you'll find out all about those. So there's Isoe Super, that's quite long lasting, it's diffusive, most people find it quite nice. And then also Hedione is another one. So Hedione and 
Also, there's this Hedion HC variant. So a lot of people, uh, again, find this pleasant. It's quite diffusive and it's long lasting. And at the same time, it's quite neutral. It seems to blend well with most things and not add too much character to your perfume, but most of the time just add a kind of impact. Then, as well as that, we've also got Ambroxan. Now, Ambroxan, again, is one with different variants. You've got uh, things like Ambrofix, Ambrox Super, but essentially this molecule I find is very long lasting. A lot of people like it. You find it all over the place in uh, commercial perfumes. Well, actually that's true for all of these things here. Um, and it's also quite diffusive. So often you can notice it from a bit of a distance away. Though be careful with Ambroxan because it's actually very strong and you usually don't need to use that much of it. Then as well as that, we've got the whole category of musks pretty much. Um, musks aren't always so diffusive, but sometimes they can be. However, they usually are extremely long lasting. And also most people really do like musky scents. So again, it's ticking quite a lot of these boxes. Then after that, we have the ionones and the damascones. Both of these are really quite strong, quite powerful raw materials. So you don't usually need to use a high dosage and they often really add to the diffusion these raw materials are a bit more, let's say, um, kind of character imparting than some of the other ones. Um, I guess maybe Ambroxan is a little bit as well. So the more of these raw materials you use, it's probably gonna take your perfume base away from something more generic and make it a little bit more specific, though if you dose them in moderation, you can still fit them into your perfume base. Then, as well as these, you also have things like the Woody Ambers, so things like Amber Extreme and Cedar Amber. And then you also have the salicylates. These are quite good if you're looking towards maybe a more floral leaning composition, um, but they're used all over the place as well, especially amyl salicylate and benzyl salicylate. And then finally, I would also say that vanillin and its derivatives are also pretty, um, they're pretty widely used. So when I say and its derivatives, I mean vanillin, uh, ethyl vanillin, and then similar things like veratraldehyde. So so if you use all of these, um, yes, they are not all completely neutral. So when you use the kind of vanilla things, it will generally make it a bit sweeter. Then when you go to use the woody ambers, it'll make it a bit more like a woody amber. If you go and use the ionones, it'll make it a little bit more violet and the damascones might make it a little bit kind of fruity kind of rose. Though in general, by using kind of combinations of these kind of things, I think it's quite easy to achieve something that's just quite nice smelling and it generally performs quite well. So you might want to make a couple of these different perfume bases, maybe for different contexts. You might want to make one that's a bit lighter, a bit fresher, and one that's a bit more kind of darker, more of like a woody amber or something like that. You might want to have a few up your sleeve for different situations. So then let's go and actually look at some of these perfume bases in action. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the formula for a perfume base, which I've got them made, and then I'm going to smell it, let you know what it smells like. And then I'm also going to show an example of doing a trial where I go and take a raw material, a completely random raw material, which I just happen to feel like using, and then adding just a small amount of it to the perfume base and seeing the effects. So just before we get onto that, this is pretty much how you want to use these perfume bases. Essentially what you're doing is creating the basic structure of a perfume. And the idea is that then on top of this, you're going to add maybe one, two, three raw materials at just quite a low dosage. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna give the perfume base its own character. And they're gonna kind of make a whole perfume with that base, but they're gonna make a perfume that then kind of smells like or has the theme of those raw materials that you added to it. So let's get into it. Let's start off with this perfume base, which I made yesterday. I just improvised it for this video. And let's go have a look at the formula that I came up with. So when I was coming up with this formula, what I decided was firstly, I wanted to put a bit of Ambrofix in because well, I just quite like it. Um, not everyone likes Ambrofix, but again, this is a bit about when I say, you know, you can tailor these perfume bases to your personal taste. Um, so I put in some Ambrofix. I thought then we probably want to have some musks and my kind of favorite or go-to musk is ethylene bracelet. I think it's great. It just smells really nice. It works with a lot of things. It doesn't overpower things too much. And also it's just quite cheap and like easy to use. So it's kind of just like great in all different areas really. So I thought let's put in a good amount of that. But I didn't want it just to smell of ethylene bracelet. I thought maybe let's give it a bit more spice. Let's just give it a little bit of a unique signature. So I thought let's pick another musk to go with ethylene bracelet. And I quite like doing this, taking ethylene bracelet and then putting it in a two to one ratio with some other musk, which has a bit more character. So in this case, I chose habanolide, which I think smells a bit more like a ironing or a laundry musk. I thought maybe that would be interesting. So I said, okay, we've got our Ambrofix, uh, ethylene bracelet and habanolide. 
And then I also wanted to add Hedion and Isui Super because, you know, those things are just kind of, um, they're widely used and often they make things smell good. And, you know, it's just kind of almost like a no brainer to add these a lot of the time. So I thought, let's put in those ones. And instead of Isui Super, I decided to use the Timber Silk variant because this being my version of a perfume base, I thought, you know, I want to make it more towards my preferences and I prefer the Timber Silk version of Isui Super to the kind of original uh, version of Isui Super. So I put in Timber Silk. And then finally, I also wanted to add a bit of Veratralahide. And for this, I was a bit inspired by the competition we did a couple of months ago because one of the entries, uh, Blue Jeans, kind of opened my eyes to Veratraldehyde, which I hadn't really used before, but I found after kind of smelling this competition entry that I really liked, uh, well, I really liked Veratraldehyde and I saw how it could be kind of used to uh, harmonize with musks in the base note. And in that formula, they'd harmonize Veratraldehyde partially with the Habanalide. So I thought, let's add that in again, and hopefully that will make a nice kind of base. So as for the proportions, um, usually I think it's quite easy to put the musks at a decent percentage. And again, the Hedion and Timber Silk, they can kind of go as high as you want, really. I didn't want to make them too overpowering, so I thought let's kind of put them at a 2%, so still fairly high. And then the Amber Fix, I just wanted to have a small amount. I think 0.5% in your final formula for Amber Fix is already pretty powerful. Um, it's already going to smell a bit like Amber Fix, specifically from doing that. Um, but because I quite like it, I thought, you know what, in this formula, let's just have that, why not? And then the Vera Traldehyde again, after I've been kind of playing with this a bit recently, I found that I quite like Vera Traldehyde to be around like 1% in the final formula. So again, for this, I thought let's have the Vera Traldehyde at 1%. And so you can see roughly how these numbers kind of came to be. So I went and made that and I didn't give it a name. Well, I did afterwards, but kind of initially I didn't know what to call it. But I made it and I went and smelled it. And you know what? I actually quite like it. Um, I wasn't expecting too much given that it was just an improvisation thing. And yes, it definitely does have a little bit um, of an amber fix kind of smell to it. So maybe that was just a little bit heavy handed, but you know, I don't hate it actually. I think it works fairly well. A lot of people do like the smell. But overall, I, yeah, I just quite like it. To me, it smells kind of like dark, has a bit of like a musky vibe. Maybe it's a little bit animalic, but it's also quite clean. And I think the Veratraldehyde, that kind of maybe slight sweetness gives it a little bit of a flair as well. So you know what? I'm quite a big fan of this base. And then I was thinking of names and I was like, you know what? Let's call this the, the Dusk base because it kind of reminds me just very slightly of like the Dusk, you know, just um, after the sunset and you know, I thought, well, I probably should name it for the video because in case someone else wants to use this. So I called it Dusk Base. Anyway, so now I've got the base and I've done it at 10%, though if you're doing this in practice, I would actually maybe recommend doing these at 20% and we'll talk a bit, a bit about that later. But anyway, so that was the first step, make the perfume base. So the idea is now that with this perfume base, I could go and add any raw material that I kind of felt like on the given day and just add a little bit of that. And because I've mostly done the perfume structure already in that uh, base, so in this case it's Dusk Base, it shouldn't really matter too much what I add because as long as I dose it, you know, not way too strong, then it should end up being fairly nice because the, the rest of the base will carry the kind of smell. Also what it's doing is it's actually teaching us how the raw material that we add kind of works in perfumes because we kind of got now like a known quantity. So the idea is normally you wouldn't just improvise this, but you would make something that you really like and then use that across the board. Then the idea is you really notice the effect of the new thing that you just added because you know so well the original smell of the base that that effect or the difference by adding that new thing, that suddenly is very clear to you. So now you've learned quite a lot about your raw material because you've learned the effect that it has on a perfume. So what I chose to add to this and for all of these that I'm gonna go over, I was just looking at my library of raw materials and looking through them until I saw something when I thought, hmm, you know what, I haven't looked at that in a while but I quite like that smell and, you know, I wonder how this would smell in a perfume. So what I picked out was the Black Agar Jivco 215 base, which is an oud recreation or an oud base by Jivodon. I haven't used it too much, but I do quite like the smell. So I thought, you know, let's try it out. 
So I took just a little bit of it. So I essentially made one gram of all these perfume bases at 10%. Then I just added a 0.1 gram at 10%. So just a small amount of each of these things I tested to the perfume base to see what happened. So that's what I did here. And yeah, what does it smell like? <laughs> and it's funny because I just made this kind of, you know, so randomly, but I actually really love the way it smells. I actually just want to keep smelling it. Um, I could definitely wear this as a perfume. And yeah, the way it smells, I guess, is, well, you really get this kind of dark, kind of mysterious element from the oud. And I also think it actually manages to make almost a bit of an accord. I think it really brings out the musks in a different way that were in the base and kind of emphasizes those a bit, adds some kind of spicy notes. But the whole kind of thing just melds really well together. And yeah, I just, I just love the smell which honestly, so this one was probably more successful than I expected, but that is something that can happen when you do this kind of perfume based method because you've already got something that smells nice and you're adding something else that smells nice. And the other thing, even though it may be something that's quite strong, all you really need to now do is kind of dose it right. So in this case, it seemed like the dosage and the choice uh, worked quite well. And this won't always be the case. Sometimes you'll get something that's maybe a bit too strong and then you'll have to make it weaker or occasionally it won't work at all. But because we already kind of confirmed that we've got like a nice perfume on our hands here, um, essentially it wasn't too unlikely that adding something else nice to it kind of was gonna be nice as such. But if we'd have just gone and took a load of random things and put them together, there would have been a good chance that there just would have been no structure and a lot of those things or all of them wouldn't have been dosed correctly. And then when you've got all that chaos going on, the chances that you'll actually get something out at the end coming out nice, at least on your first try, are very low. And even then, without uh, these kind of raw materials that do provide the kind of structure to the perfume, it can be difficult even to kind of change and edit until you get something that's nice. So yeah, this one was a success. Next then, we've got the Grosjean Accord. So I already did a video about the Grosjean Accord and a video where I did variations, basically the same thing we're doing now. But I thought I would do another one just to illustrate the point because it's such a great example of one of these perfume bases. So if you don't already know, the Grosjean Accord is basically i Sweet Super, Hedione, Alpha Isomethyl Ionone, and Galaxolide. So I've got that here and yeah, it's quite diffusive. You can smell it from a bit of a way away. And it's basically, um, quite a kind of warm embracing smell and um, they call it the hug me accord and I guess that's for a reason and it has a bit of a kind of violet smell to it as well and that's because of the iron and content but in general it's quite kind of warm and kind of soft and fuzzy and just quite pleasant now what I decided to do for the variation was to add pink pepper because well again I just was looking around my things and I saw pink pepper I thought I haven't really used that too much um, I wonder what the effect of that is as a top note, how does it work? So I added um, a small amount of pink pepper to the Groschman Accord, and this is what we have. So now this immediately, again, like the other one, smells kind of almost completely different as in that pink pepper. Even though I added a small amount, it's actually kind of taken over to a fair degree. But at the same time, it doesn't feel kind of horribly too strong. Maybe it feels like it could be kind of toned down a little bit, especially if you didn't want pink pepper to be the focal point. But this just goes to show if you did want to make a perfume revolved around pink pepper, say say you had a friend who really liked the smell of pink pepper, you could just go and take that Grosjean Accord, put in this pink pepper, you get this, and it doesn't smell too bad. It just smells like pink pepper. And then obviously it's a top note kind of that will go and you'll be left with the kind of nice smelling Grosjean Accord afterwards. So. Yeah, it works, it works fairly well. So what it adds is kind of like a spicy note, but maybe in a bit more of a kind of unique way. It's got this kind of terpenic, terpene aspect to it. And it's also kind of a little bit sweet. And it's not kind of like black pepper, that same kind of spice note. It's kind of got its own, its own version of it. I mean, I'm basically describing pink pepper right now, but it does kind of fit fairly well into the accord. I don't think it blends as well as the other one. I really like the other one that I just did uh, with the, the Oud base. And this one is kind of just like, it works, it's fine, you know? It's not terrible, but again, I feel like, you know, someone would probably quite like this. If someone really liked Pink Pepper, then there's a good chance, you know, you could find someone who quite just likes this as a, you know, quite a simple perfume. So the point I'm trying to illustrate here 
is that, you know, you can go and try all these things and you can go and make these perfumes, which may not be kind of absolutely groundbreaking or anything like that, but you're getting something that smells, you know, fairly nice with kind of minimal effort. And yeah, it, it's also allowing you to learn the raw materials, the effects they have, and kind of gauge the strength if you're dosing it right. So in this case for me, I would probably go and cut down that pink pepper to like, you know, a third of what it is at the moment if I wanted to continue this concept and then go and add something else and see, see what happens then. So that was the Groschman Accord. Next, I'm gonna do a couple of bases that I learned about from Sarah McCartney. So if you went and checked out my video uh, recently on Sarah's channel, if you don't know who Sarah is, she is an indie perfumer and she is the uh, founder of a perfume brand called 4160. I don't know if you say it like the full thing, like 4160 or just 4160 Tuesdays. And so she's the perfumer of that brand. She kindly invited me onto her channel uh, a few months ago. And you can go and watch that video that we did together in collaboration. There's actually two videos. I'll put the links in the description. And as part of that, we were um, looking at different raw materials. And in one of the videos, we actually went and essentially did this. And we looked at both her, uh, what's called her sexiest scent on the planet. Um, that was something we smelled. And she kindly was talking about the different raw materials that go inside of that, which were uh, bergamot, Icewee Super, Vanillin, and what was the last one? And Sedramba. So I've gone and made a blend with those raw materials. She didn't disclose the exact amounts, which, you know, is perfectly fine. That makes sense, given that it's a perfume she sells for her brand. But I did a kind of like an inspired by perfume base using those raw materials. And then in another video, we went and actually started adding some raw materials. We went and added, I think it was civet and mint to what's called her magical mystery material she likes to call, which is simply um, a blend in equal parts of Hedion, Icewee Super and Ethylene Bracelet. Again, this is a really good perfume base. Um, I actually love this one because it's so simple, yet it's so effective. And I think this one in particular works really well. Um, the other one, Sexy Scent on the Planet one, I just thought this would be kind of fun to do as kind of like a homage to Sarah's perfumery. So what I've gone and done is I've made two of these perfume bases based on those concepts. And then I've got, again gone and added something to it. So let's go look at those. So I'm gonna start off with the kind of my poor rendition of her sexiest scent on the planet. So what I decided to do was take the vanillin and put that kind of at a low amount, 10%, uh, because you know, vanillin, already this is really strong for vanillin, but you know, um, I decided to add 30% of the sedramba, like she said, and then the other things were Isui Super, I think, and the, the bergamot. So I went and added those again at 30% because I thought, you know, sounds reasonable, right? <laughs> so then we'll put in the vanilla in at the end at 10% and they kind of adds up to nice round numbers. I went and made that. And you know, already um, that smells pretty nice. You know, it's like a nice kind of, it's just like a nice perfume. And I think in this, um, you've got this like bergamot, which like blends quite well with the Icewee Super. I don't know what it is, but to me at least, it, they kind of like make up for each other's uh, shortcomings. So, you know, the Ice Wee Super is like nice and long lasting, but I find at the start it has a bit of kind of a dry woody note, at least on my skin, that's not so nice. But I find the Bergamot, which is, um, you know, nice and bright and kind of a bit citrusy, um, it goes and it kind of, I feel like it adds this, it's got this fizziness to it and that fizziness kind of blends well with the Ice Wee Super. And that actually kind of just covers up that dry part of the Ice Wee Super really well. And then conversely, the bergamot, because it's a natural, it's got these kind of like terpene kind of like residue notes at the end, which don't smell quite so nice, I think, as the kind of fresh citrusy kind of opening from bergamot. But then I think like the Isui Super kind of, um, kind of goes and kind of compensates for that quite well. So this blend is quite nice already. And so this is, yeah, inspired by Sarah's perfume. I'm not taking any credit for this. And then what I decided was, okay, I want to add something to that. Now, I remember before when we made the uh, perfume with her, we went and we took her magical mystery material and added mint to it. So kind of a little bit maybe inspired by that. I saw this raw material, which I had called Mintonat, and I quite like this raw material, but the thing about it is it's very random and it's not really immediately obvious kind of where it would fit in a perfume or what you do with it. So this is really the perfect opportunity to go and use one of those perfume bases to experiment with the raw material like that. So what I did was I decided to take this uh, Sexy Scent on the Planet base version, this rendition that I made, and then go and add a little bit of the Mintonat to it. So when I add the Mintonat, 
I quite liked it, honestly. I quite liked the effect it had. I actually think maybe I even preferred it to, to the original. And what it did was it added this kind of like woody, I would say it added this just very interesting kind of slightly resinous, maybe kind of slightly minty, but this kind of, I don't know, it's just this nice kind of unique woody side to the perfume. And I just think it worked quite well, actually. I think the dose was kind of reasonable that we chose. And, and yeah, I think it definitely kind of had a, a good effect on the formula. But again, it just kind of like, it kind of transformed it into something else without completely changing it. it. It kind of, it was almost just like an evolution of the formula we had. So yeah, I quite like that formula. I think the uh, the trials I made of this perfume base had way too much vanilla in it, honestly. It's like, it's very in your face and sweet in a, in a real perfume or like if I was gonna make my own kind of perfume base out of this, I would probably kind of lower that. Um, but again, like I have, you know, I have no idea what uh, proportions this is actually meant to be in. So this was just kind of like a first attempt guess. So next, let's move on to the magical mystery material. That's the Hedione Ice Wee Super and Ethylene Bracelet. And again, this one, so this one I think is a really good perfume base, um, especially if you're just starting out because it's only three raw materials. Um, maybe if you're a beginner and you're new to all this, maybe you'd want to take this one um, because it's nice and it's, it's easy and it's great. And then you could also take the Grosjean Accord and just between those two, you've already got like two perfume bases which are great to use. So this on its own, this one is great because it really is very nondescript. It's very kind of subtle and quiet, yet at the same time, it it does have some presence and it does have some like diffusivity and it lasts a long time and it's just it's just very soft and, and pleasant. And this one really you can kind of build on and I think it will transform in a lot of different ways because it's just very neutral. So what I decided to add to it was something called Violif. And again, that's because I just, I saw it on my shelf. I thought, um, I haven't really used that. Let's let's see what happens. So the Violif, now this, I put in the amount, the same amount as we did with the other things. And this one was like crazy strong straight away. So, you know, that showed me immediately that Violif, you really probably want to dose it a bit lower unless you want that again to be the star of your perfume. Um, but what it smells like is it's kind of a green note. It's kind of like a violet leaf absolute, I think, kind of note. It's quite a, um, it's kind of like a, a green note. So in the same category as things like Cistri Hexanol, like your grassy green notes, maybe this is a bit more leafy. But anyway, with the Violif, so this was really strong and overpowering, like I said. But you know what? It still kind of works to some degree. If you really liked Violif, then this is almost kind of just like Violif with a bit of structure, if you think about it. Um, it definitely adds some freshness, it adds some greenness, and yeah, I mean, it's definitely by no means a finished perfume. Um, but as I said, like doing this was such a simple experiment because assuming we had a load of our magical mystery material made up in some kind of bottle, we just take a bit of that, take a bit of Violif, put it together and see what happens. And in essence, that's how you're gonna learn a lot in perfumery, just trying out these things, taking notes, and then you slowly learn, oh, Violet, that's quite strong. Okay, I probably wanna dose it in a small amount. So there we go. That is, that is four different kind of perfume bases. One of them, which I improvised, one of them, the famous Grosjean Accord, and then two of them inspired by Sarah McCartney. Now, of course, you can go and make your own perfume bases and there are loads more out there you can find on forums. For example, someone in our Discord group very kindly posted their own perfume base. So I'll put that formula up on the screen so you can go and try that one out. I haven't tried it yet, but um, apparently they've had a lot of success with this. So this is another one that might be great to try. And of course, what I would also just recommend is you go and create your own, go and find one that kind of fits you, your own personality and what you want your perfumes to smell like make that up as a perfume base, make a load of it, and then just start making different kind of perfume variants from it and see where it gets you. So let's kind of recap then. So these perfume bases, what are the main benefits? Why do I think they're so good? Well, firstly, like I say, you can go and make up a big bottle of these. So you could go and make something like, well, you could make a bottle like this. This is probably too big, this is a litre, but um, you could go and make, Say this one, for example, is 30 milliliters or maybe something a bit bigger, like 100 milliliters. And the idea is you go and make that once. 
And then instead of each time you go and make your formula having to pipette out all of those separate things, you go and save all those pipettes so it's a bit more eco-friendly. And then you just go and take a certain amount of that base, put it in, a certain amount of your other kind of raw material or raw materials, depending on how many you want to add. And hey presto, you've got your perfume. It's taken you a minimal amount of time because you've only had to put in a couple of things, a minimal amount of pipettes, and yeah, it's just super easy. So that's one benefit. Another benefit of this is, well, you're working with a known quantity. So I'm gonna assume here that you probably only make a couple of these perfume bases and you're gonna be using them quite frequently. And then what's happening is you get so used to that smell, you learn that smell of the perfume base, so specifically and intimately, just like any other raw material, that you become kind of very attuned to any changes on that smell. So as soon as you go and add something in and you go and see what happens, you really clearly notice the effect that that other thing you added had on the formula. So you kind of really go and learn with your raw materials the effect that they have on a perfume as opposed to just the effect that they have in isolation. And that of course is great for your kind of education or your self-learning in perfumery. Now, when going to make these perfume bases, what I would recommend is probably doing something like making the whole thing to 20%. I know I did 10% in these videos, that's because I usually do things in 10% um, and I haven't actually gone so far yet as to making up a big one of these stock solutions. I haven't quite like decided on a perfume base for me, but I would recommend doing it at 20% when you found one that works for you. And the reason for that is because when you go and use it at 20%, when you start adding other things, especially if they're pre-diluted already down to like 5% or 10%, what will start happening is your perfume usually will get a bit more diluted and most people want to keep their kind of perfumes that they make in like an eau de parfum concentration. So maybe something like 15 to 20%, that kind of range. So by starting with a 20% perfume base, you already know that the perfumes you're going to end up with are going to be much closer to that eau de parfum range. Of course, if you usually make weaker perfumes like eau de toilettes or eau de colognes, then maybe you do want to start with a lower level perfume base. But that's just another thought to take into account. The other reason I like these perfume bases so much is if you go and create your own, what it really allows you to do is go and create your own unique kind of like perfume signature as such. And you could think of this a bit like uh, the perfume brand Guerlain. They have this famous thing called their Guerlainade. And what you could go and do is similar or inspired by that, you can go make your own perfume base and you could go and add a few kind of raw materials or maybe just a few twists that are things that you personally just really like. And that goes then and makes your perfumes or your kind of brand or whatever, just a little bit unique because you've kind of got that DNA in your perfumes um, that almost kind of shouts that it's you and it's your perfumes and it's your kind of taste. Um, so that's just another reason that I think it's cool to have these. Overall though, the best part about this whole method is that it's so easy and a lot of the things you make just end up smelling nice like we saw. Um, so it's, a lot less stressful than, you know, trying to build everything from scratch all the time. And inevitably that makes perfumery more fun and allows you to kind of be more creative as opposed to always just focusing on getting that perfume to even just smell nice in the first place. So I'd really recommend that you go and try out this if you haven't done something similar already. Hopefully you managed to get some good use out of this technique in the future and hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, do consider subscribing to the channel and then all the new videos that I make every week about perfumery will come straight to your subscription feed. And also consider just giving the video a like because you know, it supports me, supports the channel. Anyway, thank you. And I will see you next time with another video about perfumery.